This is Twit. We're on the topic of nothing to do with security. I needed to respond to what was by far the most tweeted to me news item in a long time. And our listeners who are naturally on top of their game felt about this pretty much as I do. For more than two and a half decades, the highly respected Microsoft engineer Raymond Chen has been blogging. Oh, Last I do Tuesday. know what you're talking about. <laughs> I love I this. I knew you would. Last, <laughs> Last Tuesday, he posted a blog entry that was just so weird that everyone picked up on it. Raymond's posting was titled, Janet Jackson had the power to crash laptop computers. Now, the fact that this was assigned a CVE number, CVE 2022 38392, has apparently lent it more credibility, or at least more notoriety, I, you know, than I think it deserves. And the fact that the CVE refers to Raymond's blog as its sole reference seems to be somewhat self-referential. Raymond refer cites the CVE, which cites Raymond. Uh, I'm actually wondering whether it might have been a slow blog week, and Raymond was, you know, may have needed a bit of filler. So his blog post opens with two lines. A colleague of mine shared a story from Windows XP product support. Okay, well, that wasn't recent, presumably. Anyway, he said, a major computer manufacturer discovered that playing the music video for Janet Jackson's Rhythm Nation would crash certain models of laptops. Okay, <laughs> so from, from the CVE, we learn that this was, quote, certain models of laptops circa 2005. So 17 years ago, the CVE's formal description says, because, you know, if it's a CVE, you need a formal description. It says a certain unnamed 5400 RPM OEM hard drive as shipped with laptop PCs in approximately 2005 allows physically proximate attackers to cause a denial of service, you know, device, it says device malfunction and system crash via a resonant frequency attack with the audio signal from the Rhythm Nation music video. <laughs> if this wasn't April, if, I mean, it's not April 1st, right? So, really? So, we can see now why the tech press thought that this was just too wonderful to pass up. On the other hand, we have a CVE that was apparently issued based upon what amounts to a friend told me rumor. No mention of the maker model of the 5400 RPM OEM hard disk that should be kept away from discos. So this begs the question of just how low the bar has been set for issuing CVEs. You know, this is not an attack, although, okay, there are a vocal group of people who feel that any playing of Janet Jackson's Rhythm Nation should qualify as a form of terrorism. Uh, and neither is it a bug that needs to be fixed, nor malware that needs to be expunged. There's no action that can or should be taken today. It's from 17 years ago. So why give this, you know, heard it from an XP support guy, a CVE in 2022? I have no idea. Of course, those who've been following this podcast will recall that video, which was also cited in some of the coverage of this Rhythm Nation hard drive DDoS attack, where somebody, and, and we show this on the podcast, right, was monitoring the dynamic throughput of an array of spinning hard disk drives while screaming at the array at the top of his lungs. And sure enough, the throughput visibly dropped during the screaming. Uh, and as we noted at the time, the throughput dropped because modern mechanical hard drives have crammed their tracks so closely together. I mean, actually, they're now overlapping each other. It's like, you know, this is what engineers do, right? They engineer DRAM 
so tightly that neighboring rows inter interfere and cause bits to flip well they're there they've also crammed hard drive tracks so closely together that they are, have become quite sensitive to any exogenous vibration and in fact the way they're mounted in the server chassis can be critical now raymond of course also referred to the famous video showing that 1940 collapse of the tacoma narrows bridge uh, in the same way that Rhythm Nation was able to rub some hard drives the wrong way back in 2005, the coincidentally timed gusts of wind through the Tacoma Narrows rubbed the bridge the wrong way until it disintegrated. Anyway, I felt that this podcast needed to at least acknowledge this story that everyone tweeted to me over the last week uh, and that most of the tech press had a lot of fun talking about, uh, you know, as did we here.